This video is all about an update on my high mileage Tesla Model 3, what it's like living with it and what the costs have been so far. So here she is. She's a beaut, isn't she? So this is a Tesla Model 3 long range and it's a 2019 plate, 69, uh, registered September 2019 and it's now done 120,200 odd, we'll double check the mileage in a second. And I've had it for three years, I bought it with 57,000 miles on it and it's been great. And I must admit, I've driven lots and lots of petrol cars because I was in the motor trade for, goodness me, 17 odd years. And I've driven, you know, Audi S3s, Golf R's, Audi TTS's, Q5s, had a load of Jap stuff, Skylines, 200 SX's, Scoobies, Honda Integra, loads of cool performance cars. And I'll tell you what, this is probably what well, is the best all rounder car I've ever had. But let me just focus on the damage and you know the condition of the vehicle and then I'll go into the details with regards to the costs. So if we start with the front bumper, as you can tell, it's got a um, slightly different front splitter. So it's an unplugged performance splitter and it's, it actually doesn't make any difference to how low it is. But in terms of the front bumper, it's actually now been sprayed because someone reversed into it essentially. Um, it did have quite a few uh, stone chips on the front, so be wary of that. Bear in mind some people do uh, the film protection on them from brand new. Uh, unfortunately, when it was uh, repaired, someone reversed into me very shortly afterwards, so that's my uh, repair that I've done so far. Needs a bit of a touch-up, to be honest. But yeah, a couple of uh, stone chips on the bonnet, but headlights, they've been fine, working absolutely great. I've got no issues with the headlights. Yes, you can get matrix lights, but it doesn't really bother me, and I've had matrix lights before. Right, if we go to the wings, this is really important to uh, factor in, actually. Uh, oh, it's a bit of a, that'll polish out. Um, something to note on any high mileage Tesla Model 3 is here, if they haven't had mud flaps, they do it kicks up stones and it hits here. As you can tell, I've actually kind of um, painted over it more recently. It looks like it needs doing again, but something to watch out for if you have, uh, or if you are looking at buying a high mileage Tesla Model 3, that is something to focus on and sort out because there are a lot of aluminium parts on this car, but the sills, they do seem to be car, um, uh, sort of not aluminium essentially. So there is this <laughs> damage on the door. It's been there for a while. I know it's gonna cost me about 500 quid to fix, but I just haven't bothered to be honest. Uh, no doubt well, someone will bang into me and uh, they can pay for it, happy days. But it doesn't really bother me, but yeah, that's something that I did. Um, and watch, watch the video that I've done before previously. I'll put it just up here, which was the costs and an overview from 60, well, 57,000 miles to 100,000 miles. Back's all okay, you know, Paint works really, really good on the car. I mean, it's not, you know, some people say about the paint being different on certain panels. It's okay, it's not great. And in terms of alignment, um, you can do quite a lot of alignment if it's an early model like this, because the American ones compared to the Chinese ones, and the Chinese ones were 2021 onwards. Although you do get some dechromed um, American ones, um, just be, be careful that there are a few differences, especially between standard range and uh, uh, the batteries. Some are LFP, the Chinese ones, but the American ones aren't, uh, something to uh, consider. But, um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of the panels, you can adjust them to make them fit a little bit better, but it tends to be the 2021 and onwards models, the Chinese ones with the heated front seat, sorry, heated steering wheel and the heat pump, better on efficiency and they're put together a bit better. But yeah, I mean, last time I did the video of the one that I highlighted earlier, I had one of my lights here, it actually fallen out and I'd glued it back in and yeah, it's been fine. So that's all good. Um, no kind of damage at the back here. Um, as per my previous video, this, this light here used to mist up, but it was replaced under warranty by Tesla. Um, my local Tesla, Northampton, have been amazing. But yeah, bodywork wise, paint, all okay. I mean, you could argue on both sides, the stones do kind of throw up a little bit here. This could do a bit of a polish. I've given it a quick clean today, but it's not had a polish for a little while, so I'll get onto that. 
In terms of the chrome trim, they've not gone milky like some of the VAG stuff can. Um, but yeah, that's all, all fine. Uh, so let's go inside, I'll show you the interior wear. So bear in mind, this is used as a commuter car. So I drive it at the moment down to Southampton and back. Used to do 30K a year, now I do about, I don't know, 20K a year, including family stops. So we have everything in this car, the dog, the family, everything. And as you can see, I mean, the seats, the seats are really, really good still. No issues at all. Um, in terms of, I mean, I've seen a little bit of wear up there, but I mean, you can probably hardly see it, but that's just me being a bit fussy, I suppose. But door cards all okay. Steering wheel, something to note on steering wheels. On the 2021 and onwards uh, Tesla Model 3 steering wheels, they, because they've got a heated steering wheel element, it tends to be that the steering wheels um, do get damaged more easily from what I've seen, but mine is absolutely fine as you can see. It's, yeah, as you can see, yeah, it's, it's like new really. I mean, <laughs> no damage at all. The, uh, we'll get inside the car. The, although it's got the kind of piano black, um, Kind of interior bits here they don't actually get uh, scratched that easily and I, I don't you know I don't use this car I'm not really super careful um, and yeah it just it, they don't scratch so much although I know people like to wrap them etc screen still working absolutely fine you know does exactly what it should do um, oh I'm watching Elon Musk and Joe Rogan the passenger seat all okay yeah no damage there, no rips, no tears. Um, interiors, yeah, just really, really good. You would never think that this car, let me show you the back now, and these rear seats are used a lot. It's used every day. We're doing a lot of miles in this car and it's bang on. Oh, I've just seen some dirty marks up there. Oh my goodness, what have my children have been doing? So let me turn around the camera and I'll give you an overview of the costs so far. There we go. As you can see, I was a little bit off. 120,564 miles. And um, it's worth noting that now my car has hit 120,000 miles, it's out of battery warranty and out of motor warranty. So for a lot of people, that would be a little bit uncomfortable. Although, you know, there's a little bit of a uh, worry in my mind. I'm not that worried because I'm part of a Facebook group. Uh, it's High Mileage Teslas, uh, as well as Charge Heads UK. So don't forget to uh, jump onto Facebook, Instagram, um, X, and many different platforms, TikTok, Charge Heads or Charge Heads UK, you'll find it straight away. And please like and subscribe. Um, there's loads of videos around what I've done to my Tesla Model 3 Rusty in terms of the modifications. Um, there's lots of modifications on this Tesla um, and I'll go through that with the cost kind of separately uh, in terms of what, what I've spent on it in the last sort of 20,000 miles. But, but yeah, so as I said, warranty, I mean, it might worry some people, but the way that this thing drives, the way that the battery degradation has been pretty solid, and I'll be doing a battery degradation uh, test on my next video. So like and subscribe, hit the notification bell so you make sure you can see that. Um, so last time I checked it, 107,000 miles, it was 89%. And I've done various tests. I've done the Tesla one, Altelium one, and I've done um, Tessie app one and one off my other app, which is uh, Nginx, which again, if you look at Nginx Boost 50, there's a video up here telling you all about how to boost your Model 3 performance and give it a load of extras. Uh, sorry, long range or standard range. So I, I'm not too worried, but in summary, from what I've seen in terms of the data, the data is key because that is essentially the information out there that's factual, load a load of uh, vehicles out there just giving us insights in terms of understanding you know what's the battery longevity like and we know that the motors are rated to a million miles the batteries i mean i've seen some that have gone to 400,000 miles plus and the great news is although there's a lot of going to call it propaganda there's a lot of negativity around oh you know new battery it cost you 18 grand you know you don't have to worry about going to a Tesla main dealer to get a replacement battery anymore. There is companies out there that can swap the battery for 
less than half the cost of that, a lot less in fact. So there are a lot of independent uh, EV specialists out there that are now helping support uh, EV owners in keeping their electric vehicles going, essentially. So let's get into the costs. So I've got my, uh, my Tesla notepad here. Fanboy, eh? So in terms of the costs, here we go. So I recently took Rusty, my Tesla Model 3, to a specialist, Cleveley EV. I'm sure a lot of people have heard of them. And if you want to watch that video, I'll put it up here. And essentially I replaced the rear suspension bushes. I knew that the front suspension bushes were going, but when, when they put it up in the air, they noticed that these rear suspension bushes were really on their way out. And that cost 378 pounds. So that's both the rear upper bushes. Um, I then took it to my local Hevra dealer and Hevra are uh, uh, hybrid electric uh, vehicle repair association uh, garages. If you go on Hevra website, uh, put in your postcode, they'll find you the nearest EV specialist to you. It's well worth going to those specialists rather than potentially your main dealer, depending on the age of vehicle and what you, know, what you want to spend, etc. So um, I took it to my local Hevra dealer. They did the lower arms. Um, that cost me £274.20. Uh, so as you can tell, well, as you can hear, quite a lot of bushes have been done on this car. Now, some might argue, and I would argue, that the reason why the bushes have probably gone a bit quicker on mine, because I've heard of a lot of Tesla Model 3s that, yes, okay, some of the bottom uh, front arm bushes do go more regularly, even on standard cars, but because I've lowered or had lowered my suspension on IBAC lowering springs, I think I've probably put a little bit more um, uh, wear on them so it's my own fault really, but <clears throat> I've taken the cost and it dries, you know, beautifully. Um, I've put new tires on the car. They cost £720. I think I got 10% discount because I got all four. Uh, in my last video, you'll see that normally I like to find some pretty uh, good value on part ones, which a lot of people slated me for in the comments, but is what it is. But I did put new tires on it. Um, I did recently have a blowout on my way into Bristol. Um, late on a Saturday and I found a tire place they put a really awful part worn on it and then I ended up because it was the only thing they had other than a mismatched tire uh, it cost me like 40 quid and then I ended up finding a the same brand tire similar sort of tread depth on eBay um, and got that uh, bought that cost in total with the um, with the uh, part worn 120 quid then I got the wheel alignment done and I did do a video on wheel alignment. But I'm not going to highlight that one because you can just find it on the uh, on the channel. So wheel alignment cost me, it was trade, so it cost me a lot less. But normally wheel alignment's about 80 quid. And if you are changing your bushes or suspension, you need to do it because otherwise it will be slightly out. MOT cost me 64 quid. It's quite expensive, that. Um, and, and that's it. I mean, in total there, with the new tyres, that's £1,681.20, and that's the last 20,000 miles of driving. Now, there were more costs, but this is more to do with me rather than the car. So, because it was lowered on IBAC Springs, I caught the bottom skid plate, and when I put it up in the air when I was doing the lower arms, the technician was like, where's your skid plate gone? I was like... I don't know. <laughs> so I got a replacement skid plate and that worked out to be £154 to buy it, uh, £29, well it's about £100 to fit it because there was something else that was broken uh, on uh, that helped mount that skid plate. So yeah, not ideal but it cost me yeah about 250 quid in the end which yeah, you can get cheaper skid plates out there but I bought an official Tesla one and I got a load of free goodies actually on my birthday. That was a bonus. The other big cost was my shocks. And this is definitely due, due to me having IBAC springs. Now, because the IBAC springs that I had weren't, you know, anytime you put lowering springs on a car, you will knacker your shocks a lot quicker. I knew that from previous cars, but it was something cost effective that I wanted to do at the time. And they did 60,000 miles, great. And the reason I can be uh, quite confident with this is because I've got 
a friend, and again, I'll put the video up here, who's got a 220,000 mile Tesla Model 3. Um, it's a long range plus, or like a stealth performance, where it had the same suspension on it up to 217,000 miles when he bought it. He'd only recently changed it. So I actually fitted some mountain pass performance uh, comfort coilovers. So they're height adjustable, um, but they're really comfortable. You know, bearing in mind the roads are knackered, not going to be any better anytime soon. If someone does want to slightly lower their vehicle, improve the stance, put spacers on it, that sort of thing. If you're into that sort of thing, then if you are looking uh, to do that, they're the best um, coilovers on the market and they would cost delivered just over a thousand pounds, which is great value. So that's Mountain Pass Performance because they're based on KW uh, suspension. Really good uh, German brand. But watch the other video if, if you want to check it out. So in terms of how it's going, I mean, all the electrics work. Like there's no faults with this car at all. You know, in terms of the range, it's still really, really good. When I charge it to 100%, it shows about 278 and realistically in the winter and i just do dual carriageways all the time so it's motorway uh when i'm like really trying to eke out all the range it probably do 250 230 in the winter um yeah so probably, probably sorry 230 in the winter 230 miles in the winter and then when summer comes the uh miles per kilowatt come right right up so you're talking, you know, if you're really careful and driving kind of 70 miles an hour, not boosting it, not accelerating hard, you can easily get four and a half miles per kilowatt. I mean, I've seen five miles per kilowatt sometimes as well. But right now, um, and it's literally just been driving around town. I'll show you here. So it's getting 285 uh, watts per mile, which essentially in miles per kilowatt is about 3.7 uh, miles per kilowatt and that's just just driving around town so stop start traffic etc which is okay and the temperature is about uh, eight degrees so that's what it's been like so far i'm going to be doing a battery degradation test on it now it's done 120,000 miles so tune in for that uh in a video coming up and my other half's car which is not an electric car is going to be replaced soon and i'm that confident in the high mileage teslas I'm looking to buy my own higher mileage Tesla Model 3 for her car as well. So watch this space. Some interesting stuff is coming.